swords in the middle Swords on this side of the head There's lovers all around you The prince of life is there Open up your eyes Good morning. My name is Mike Silbert. I thank you for joining us this morning. The title of this talk is Jesus Gives Us All Power Over the Enemy. And we ask, uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. And we thank you that you have given us all power over all the power of the enemy. And we ask your touch on this talk. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, I recently heard a man named Chris, uh, his last name is Ledesma, give a talk on discipleship. He centered his message on the fact that a large part of Jesus' ministry dealt with people who were, as he described, demonized. These are people who were influenced or impacted by spiritual darkness in the form of evil spirits. And he said, I think a third of Jesus' ministry was dealing with this. Now, unfortunately, because of the ever-increasing exposure to the spiritual realm, because of social media, most of us, if not all of us, have become demonized to one extent or another. Now, we're not talking about a full-blown, you know, like uh, we think of, you know, guys uh, being foaming at the mouth and their heads are turning around, you know, and they're, you know, not that, but, you know, we get influenced by little things that affect us every day that we get used to, habits, or, you know, um, that we get that are not from God. So I'm not, you know, I think most people are unco uncomfortable with this or ignorant of it. I'm certainly not an expert on it. But I've, led, I've read a little bit on spiritual warfare. I know there are certain truths that pertain to this, but uh, this is what Chris did. He, he came up with this little um, chart type thing to look at. And it kind of gives you a good idea of how to look at this in a more understandable way. He looks at, he, he proposes we look at demonization as helping someone get free in four parts. And we suggested, he suggested we start with ourselves. You know, that way we become a little bit more confident before we start helping others. So, when we're praying for someone or for ourselves and confronting spiritual opposition, the first thing we do is, we ask questions. We got this question mark here, okay? And that's what Jesus did. In Mark 9, 21, this guy brings uh, his son to Jesus to, to deliver him. You know, his son, his son's got, you know, he's got demons and stuff. And uh, Jesus asked the man, how long has this been happening? And he said, from childhood. Another way to ask the same question is what was going on in your life or the person's life? when this began to happen. Now, if the spirit itself reacts and speaks to you through the person who's demonized, do what Jesus did. You know, another time he was uh, working with this guy who was full of demons, and uh, J Jesus had commanded the demon to leave this guy, and the demon responded by pleading with Jesus and talking to him. So Jesus asked the spirit, what is your name? The evil spirit responded, my name is Legion, for we are many. This is from Mark chapter 5, uh, verse 9, I think is this one. It was shortly after this, the demons left the man and entered into a herd of pigs. You know, identifying where and when the demonization originated or getting the spirit's name is a critical step in identifying the spirit so you can deal with it. Okay, two. Identifying possible links. These are kind of um, connected. But, um, and first, and we're talking about starting with ourself. You know, I've got this verse here, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 30. This is where it talks about examining yourself before the Lord's Supper, and it can apply to what we're doing here. I'm going to read you just uh, 
part of the, those verses. A man or a woman must examine themselves before they celebrate the Lord's Supper. Then he or she can eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But if they do not examine themselves or do not judge themselves rightly, they eat and drink judgment or condemnation to themselves. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep, which in, in their vernacular meant a number of you have died because of this. The spiritual principle being described here is apl applicable to dealing with this demonization, you know, working with spirits. If we do not do a spiritual inventory on ourselves, we may be allowing an evil spirit to come alongside us. It wants really to destroy us physically and spiritually. Again, verse 30, I just read, for this reason many among you are weak and sick and some have even died. So what are we looking for? Okay, so there's two categories here. There's uh, category H, which basically are hurts that we have received in our life. Now, most of this comes to us when we're children or adolescents. You know, we get hit by this stuff and, you know, we're clueless. But, you know, children and adolescents are very vulnerable to things like that. Um, and especially now we have social media and unfortunately kids are the experts in all this. And they're exposing themselves to you know, who knows how much stuff that isn't good. And if that wasn't enough, we live under an administration. We live under a nation that has leaders um, that promote things that are not good. Same-sex marriage. The smorgasbord of sexual expressions, opening wide the door to all kinds of evil spiritual powers being unleashed on kids. But here's the four uh, main areas of hurts. Uh, trauma, you know, my, my dad, um, when he was young, he was just an adolescent, just a young teenager. He lost his father and two brothers within a short period of time, and he just shut down. You know, for the rest of his life, even as an adult, it was very difficult to reach, even me, you know, his son, I couldn't reach into his heart, you know, to get him to talk about his life. He just couldn't do it. He was totally shut down. Hates and unforgiveness. Um, I think we all know if, if we harbor unforgiveness, and sometimes we don't realize that that happened to me. I was... I was looking cross-eyed at a family member and uh, thought I had the right, you know, because he was doing something which I didn't think was right anyway. But I found out later, no, that's, that's not my place. You know, sure, I, you know, I, I explained to someone if I believe what they're doing is I don't agree with or it will hurt them, yeah. But you can't harbor unforgiveness. You can't do that. You know, that's not from God. That, that allows, it's an opening for spirit horrors and fears you know when you're young if we see a movie that like a horror movie or something that can make an imprint you know in your heart in your spirit that goes with you and maybe a, a spirit of fear will come upon you unreasonable fear so when you see someone in a maybe a halloween costume and you know the person but you're frightened of them you know that's it's an unreasonable fear um, humiliations from abuse or rejection, you know, when children are humiliated or abused, it's an open door to spirits that come in. That's category H, hurts. Category S, sin. Sin committed by ourselves. Um, when we commit sin, we're just opening the door. Unconfessed sin. If we knowingly go on committing sin um, purposefully, you know, we're, we're opening the door to spirits to afflict us. Um, injustices committed against us. Um, we all know when someone does something against us, it's wrong. And the way we respond to it. Now, Jesus says we need to learn to forgive. You know, but if we harbor this injustice and we're going to get, you know, get even with them, that kind of thing, it opens the door for spirits to come to us and afflict us. Uh, witness sin, like 9-11, when that took place, that was a horrible thing, how we react to that. You know, if we overreact, you know, in fear or um, we're going to, you know, make them pay, you know, these kinds of things can open the doors if we overreact. Uh, generational sin. Um, 
a fa family member who was his great-grandfather was a very mean person actually locked his grandfather in an attic for a year and a half when he was like 12 years old that's how mean this guy was when he got out of the attic he left home never came back he was only 12 years old this was this person's grandfather this person's grandfather also became abusive and abused the man abused the man i knew the man i knew also abused his kids you know so there's three generations of abuse going down from generation to generation horrible thing this is all all these are all things all ways that spirits can kind of come alongside us, be a part of our lives. And, and these are things we need to identify. If we can identify where these things have started, maybe things that are, are troubling us or whatever, um, it helps to deal with them and specifically point to them and, uh, and deal with them. Uh, Jesus gave us authority. That's what this is. And by the way, these little symbols here kind of represent these four different areas. Ask questions, question mark. This is a chain link, identify possible links. Okay, and this is a crown uh, representing authority. Pray with faith and authority. And this comes from Matthew 28, 16 to 20, the last few verses in the book of Matthew, and from Luke 10, 19. I kind of put those together. And this is what it says. Jesus spoke to his disciples and to us, saying, All power and authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make disciples of all nations. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. This is the title of the, this talk. Nothing will hurt you. Remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Matthew 28, Luke 10. Jesus has given us all authority over all evil spirits and the power to deliver those who are demonized, including ourselves. <laughs> now it's up to us to go out and use this authority Jesus has given us. And he promises he will be with us. Now, so where do we get the faith that Jesus actually has this kind of authority and has actually given it to us? Where do we get that confidence from? Well, it basically comes, there's a, a verse that says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We have to get to know Jesus by reading the word, get to know, be convinced of his power and his authority, and it just begins to flow right through us. Okay? Number four is check for results. Okay, so what do we go out and start casting out demons when nothing happens? Well, listen to this. This is from Mark 8, 22 to 25. You know, they, I'm just going to, I'm not going to read it to you. They bring a blind man to Jesus, right? And Jesus looking at this guy and he says, for whatever reason, Jesus says, I need to get this guy away from all these people. So he takes him out, leads him by the hand, gets away from the people. And he, he spits in his eyes, he prays for them, prays for his eyes. And he says, what do you see? And he says, I see men walking like trees. So Jesus goes to him again, does the same thing. What do you see now? And he, and he looks intently, and he can see clearly. Okay, the whole point is, if there are no results at first, pray again. Go through the steps. Again, start all over. Ask questions. Try to identify possible links, okay? If Jesus had to pray again, to heal the blind man, then maybe, just maybe, we may have to pray again and again, maybe up to five, six, seven, maybe 10 times or more, at least, especially if we are new at this, we're just starting out at this. You know, years ago, my mom and my wife, Leon, this was a good 20 years ago, I think, they both had chronic coughs that they just couldn't shake. My mom's probably lasted 20 or 30 years. She was you know, from way back when. And, and she went to all kinds of doctors, did everything you could think to get this cough, get rid of this cough. Same thing with Leon, only it wasn't as long years she had it. Just wasn't going away. So what we decided to do, we got together and we, we got a couple of verses together. We made little crosses with the verses on them. 
and we prayed. I, I took some oil, anointed them with oil, and said, we're just praying, Lord, we're coming to you, please heal. You know, take away the, this chronic cloth, okay? So nothing happened. All right, years went by. But we just held on to it. We had this little cross with the things. And guess what? The last 10 or 15 years of my mom's life, she passed away two years ago. She didn't cough. Same thing with Liam. The last 10 or 15 years or so, whenever we prayed that prayer, it was a couple of years after that, she hasn't coughed. Since year, I think it's year 2000, so that's over 20 years. She hasn't had that cough. So there's something about, you have to just keep at it, don't give up. It's very important. We need to stand on the word Jesus has given us and keep standing. Jesus promised, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Go and make disciples of all nations and we could add, go and deliver all nations and remember, I will be there for you. I will be with you forever. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. 